Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the opening event of Japan Society Visual Art Program. From here to there, my name is Yuki Kamiya, Gallery Director of Japan Society. I'm extremely excited to announce uh, the new fall season program in 2020. We launched today this first online commission series, which introduced newly created art project by three artists who are super active, leading creator in their generation. Nobutaka Aozaki lives in New York. Hanako Murakami lives in Paris. And Aki Sasamoto lives in New York. All of them are here with us on this virtual platform for artist presentation and discussion. For past months in this ongoing pandemic and change of our daily life, those artists has been taking challenges to create a site for art production, site for remarkable imagination, and site for collaboration. This project from here to there is a testing ground for artist practice and dialogue beyond physical distance. With a mission to foster connection between the US and Japan for over a century, Japan society has dedicated to develop mutual understanding among different cultures. For this time of isolation, we examine our role as an institution, a mediator between the artists and audiences, generating a shared experience and platform. Japan Society Gallery has a history to invite up-and-coming artists for their enthusiastic challenge since the 1950s, when we offered a fellowship grant for emerging artists at the time, including Yayoi Kusama, Yutaka Matsuzawa. In 2020, we invite artists to from here to there, where we can experience the challenging attempt to bridge physical site for art with online sites. From today, the project is live and unfold over the four months long on website, plus bi-weekly seven live events, please stay tuned. And from now, we have the great opportunity to hear each project idea and concept from the artist. A lot of have Three artists join me together, and we will discuss about art in this challenging moment. Now, I'd like to introduce Tiffany Lombard, assistant curator, who is going to introduce artists. Please join me welcoming Tiffany Lombard. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being with us today, coming from the various parts of the world you're joining from. As you can see, we're not in the gallery. I am in my home in Brooklyn and am joined online by Yuki Kamiya, Gallery Director of Japan Society, and will momentarily be joined by the three artists whose work we are all here to appreciate and learn more about. And we're all looking forward to hearing from each of them. First, I wanna extend a brief but sincere thank you to the stellar team at Japan Society and beyond who worked tirelessly to make this project today's event possible. And a particular thank you to the artists, uh, Nobutaka Aozaki, Hanako Murakami, and Aki Sasamoto, who have been collaborating with us for the past several months, working closely with us through the development of their projects. And the development continues. As Yuki mentioned, for the next four months, this exhibition unfolds online on a dedicated website that reveals new works and drawing film, performance, and photography. Given the extraordinary context of 2020, we wanted to think of this moment as an opportunity for experimentation and about making connections. Connections between making its reception, connections between the physical and digital realms, connections across time zones and geographies. We hope this artist-centered exhibition and its related program of talks, readings, and performances can be a catalyst for continued conversations around the arts. Today, we have the distinct pleasure of hearing from the artists themselves who will each provide a short presentation of their work. 
So without further delay, please allow me to more formally introduce Nobutaka Aozaki, whose work often involves the participation of strangers. Walking in Manhattan, he collects found shopping lists, notes, which are directions the artist receives from pedestrians, and other ephemera found along the city streets that form the basis of his installations, performances, and photographs. His work in residencies include collaborations with Rachel Ufner Gallery, Brooklyn Museum, Queens Museum, the Virilis Center for Art and Politics, and Spike Berlin. Welcome, Nobutaka. Thank you for the introduction, Tiffany. Um, okay, uh, so I share the screen. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, my name is Nobutaka Aozaki, and then um, for this exhibition with Japan Society, I'm presenting mainly two bodies of work, and then one is a retail on Broadway, and then another one is a grot grocery portrait series. And then before talking about those two works, I want to speak a little bit about my general practice. So um, I often combine uh, performance and the found object, developing from my everyday interaction with people on the street, and then also chance encounter with objects that have trace of humans. Um, I conduct uh, field work in the city to collect this trace of contact with people as uh, evidence of myself and others and also uh, those traces are cultural material for me to study place and the people and the community in the city. And then I thought that this would be a good example uh, since uh, this, is, this has the same title as this exhibition from here to there. Also uh, this related to two uh, artworks I'm talking. So in this work, uh, I collect handwriting map by asking people direction on the street and then connect these handwriting map and then aggregates them to create a map of the city. So this is a map of Manhattan. You see the shape of the Manhattan is emerging. And then this is a detail shot. Um, I connect uh, individuals handwriting map. Uh, so one person's handwriting map works as a part of the whole map. And then places I ask the pens, um, I ask a lot of time landmarks in the toilet books. And then I also ask when, I, when I'm hungry or thirsty, do you know any good restaurant or do you know any uh, coffee shop? So there are a lot of people's recommendation in the work. And then the, for the material, I always have a notebook with me for people to write hand them up. And then, but oftentimes a lot of people grab the paper they have. So material have a contingency too. And uh, this is a process photo. So in the process, I learned a lot of things. And then one thing is, of course, I became aware people rely on the maps on the smartphones so much. And then I realized this handwriting tradition is becoming disappearing or becoming a lost form of communication. And then, also another thing, uh, and, and then that, that makes me think about the work's meaning as an archive too. And then uh, not only this handwriting tradition, uh, places that I ask are often disappeared. So once you became aware, you kind of, um, um, the city looks different, you know, you encounter these uh, retail for lease banner everywhere in the city. And then I wonder how the city is becoming empty or becoming um, homogenized. So I conduct this field work in which 
I walked um, on the Broadway from South Steep, uh, the Battery Place in Lower Manhattan to North Steep, uh, Inwood, 222nd Street. And then I uh, took a note of all the uh, land floor business, uh, including this vacancy, which typically has this retail for lease banners. So this is from uh, notes, the page of the note. And then um, each name of the store is recorded on this um, texture map I design. Um, so uh, you see the vertical break. The vertical break is a Broadway, and then the horizontal break is a street. And then this is a Tribeca, a Soho area. And then this is a Soho. So this is um, will be updated every year uh, in order to uh, measure the changes taking place in the city over time. So I started this uh, since 2018. So this is the third year. And then this is the uh, entire map of Manhattan. And uh, not only as a socioeconomical map, I also conceive this record or data as a poetry of the street uh, because um, some store has uh, names like a phrase of the poem. Also street has a lot of repetition and then has a rhythm. So I had this idea, you know, this could be a poetry change that changes over time. So if it's a poetry, I thought it should be activated by reading. So I did this performance um, reading um, store names as a poetry. So the person left is reading west side of the street and the person right is reading east side of the street. And then as all the, uh, and then we are reading from south to north. So as the audience hear the, our reading, um, audience walk with us um, listening. And then people become aware of this repetition of bank and uh, like a pharmacy or like a food chain like Chipotle or Starbucks. And then people also become aware, you know, like a lot of uh, vacancy is in the city. So I also uh, invited people to do uh, make an audio piece uh, from um, south bottom to uh, north top of the Manhattan. And then, so this is an audio uh, sample of the audio. Santander HSBC. Bank, the UPS Mon store, market. Broadway cleaners, work in progress residential. Think coffee. Yes. And then uh, this is the uh, uh, excerpt from the, this year's uh, record. I walked uh, August uh, this year. And then see, because of the pandemic, uh, the city still have a lot of ambiguity. So I had to come up with um, the labels for different states of the stores. Some stores, um, a lot of store has flyers like closed until further notice. For those, I put temporary closed and then some store still has a plywood board protect for the looters. Uh, for those, I put uh, boarded up and then some store uh, just shutters down. You cannot tell if it's permanently closed or temporary closed. So I put the shutters down so you will see this data, three years of data in the website uh, we've been working on in Lounge today. Um, and then we will have a reading 
October 8th, uh, leading entire um, length of the Manhattan with a group of leaders. And uh, I feel this year reading the uh, store names uh, could have a different meaning of kind of recovery the city. So I hope this performance will be an opportunity to give the kind of respect or recognition for the business owner or workers or like people who suffered from this pandemic shutdown. And then I also developed the works that are based on found ephemera in the city. And then those work reflect uh, surrounding local economy of community or people. And then this uh, work is called the grocery portrait. So in this work, what I do is I shop for the grocery that are listed in this found shopping list. And then I take a photograph of the grocery as a portrait of unknown person. And then after photographing, I eat them. So this is a photograph based on this shopping list. Um, so this shopping list I found in the Clinton Hills neighborhood, Brooklyn, where a uh, Jewish uh, Orthodox community are there. Then what's unique about this shopping list is um, Shabbat toilet paper on the top. Um, I didn't know what it is, but I found out um, for the religious Jewish people, Saturday, uh, they are not allowed to cut the paper. There is a specific toilet paper, which is pre-cut. So what you see on the left side is um, um, very specific for the place. And then I really learn from you know these um, people might consider garbage. And then I also like this paper has this kind of street uh, of the history of the street. And then this is how I show shopping list at photograph juxtaposed. Uh, this is the grocery based on the shopping list I found in the rigid neighborhood Queens where a lot of Latin American stores. It's written in the Spanish too. So different language also come, come in. And then this is a list from the Bronx. And then this is uh, uh, from the list I found in the Minato Machi Nagoya, Japan, uh, where I had a residency with uh, Minato Machi at table and I participated in the art festival. So you really see through the photograph, uh, the difference of the places uh, and then different uh, cultures in the photograph. And then for the Japan Society exhibition, I've been uh, making the new portrait uh, using the Japan Society gallery, um, thankfully uh, letting, letting me use as a studio. And then Strangely, during the pandemic, I noticed a lot more people are using the shopping list because they, are, they wanted to maximize the efficiency and also minimize going to supermarket. So I keep finding kind of legacy uh, shopping list. And then for this exhibition, I, took, uh, I chose the list all found in Manhattan. And then some of them are specific for this time, like for example, this one has disinfectant Lysol spray. And then some of them has a lot of cleaning products. And uh, this is uh, a list I found in front of Japan Society, right after we had a meeting in Japan Society. And then, so you will see different uh, shopping lists and grocery portrait on the website, uh, October. Uh, I have a video, but I think it's time is coming. So.
Thank you, Nobutaka. Um, your work, in, and in particular, this project for from there really captures something of the shifts in the urban fabric of the city, kind of looking at the city itself and the detritus of the people who live there as a lens to explore what it means for a society to adapt and change. Um, I was fascinated to learn through this process from you that Broadway can be traced back to an important Native American trail, um, which I just think really underscores the fact that some of the ideas that you're exploring reach back in time beyond the present day. Mm -hmm. Speaking next in the Paris, uh, speaking next, excuse me, is the Paris-based artist Hanako Murakami. Murakami's conceptual works have a certain materiality about them. Her photographs can certainly be viewed as abstract, but upon closer look, the surfaces are quite textured and subtle. Murakami uses alternative photo processes to develop vintage photographic papers, glass plates, and even film reels from other eras. Her work is currently on view, um, in addition to From Here to There, at the Frac Normandie Rouen, and has been exhibited at Takaishi Gallery in Tokyo, Ga Gallery Alpha M in Tokyo, and as part of the Ichigo, Ichigo Tsumari Art Triennial in Niigata. She is a recipient of grants from the Pola Art Foundation as well. Uh, please welcome Hanako Murakami. Hi. Uh, thank you, Tiffany, for the introduction. Um, so um, I'm connecting uh, to this uh, opening from Paris and uh, I'm very happy uh, to participate. So um, I prepared the presentation, I share my screen. Do you see me? Yes. Um, so for this online exhibition, I present my, my new series entitled um, Imaginary Landscapes that I was working on. And this series is, um, um, so it's a series of photography, but um, each of the images are made without a camera. Um, I'm using very old photographic materials, some of them days from more than a century ago. And these plates, uh, for example, um, some glass plates uh, with a red dye on it. And, uh, and these ones are very rare materials that I found in a small town. It's a flexible material from the end of the 19th century. And I got these images by just soaking into a chemical bath that I compound by myself following the recipe I found within the package. And most of the traces you see from moisture or fungus and deterioration of the chemicals. But overall, these, uh, these can be considered as uh, traces of time. And um, those ones too, I developed them as they are because uh, they have so much going on already. And um, for others, you have less traces like this. So what I like about this online exhibition is that you'll see it later, but um, you'll be able to blow up on any details images and since it's very high resolution, um, sometimes it's, it can be much more blow up than uh, when you will see it on real. And um, it's, uh, it's also true that um, um, when you see just JPEGs online, uh, you lose some of the materiality. So um, it's so hard to see that. Uh, so this one is um, 
<coughs> on paper base. And this one is actually a, a glass plate. So um, uh, you, you lose um, some, uh, some information, but, but uh, you also gain something as well. So for these things, I created landscapes, but by soaking them into chemical bars. <coughs> Sorry. So what is so curious about these plates or papers is that it's been, since it's been uh, forgotten for a long time. Um, so when we talk about photography, it's often about an image from a precise moment in a certain location, says a photographer chosen, but, uh, but those materials, uh, they result from an accumulation of non-choice until the moment where I have opened the package. And um, for the live event, I can show you how I process my work. And um, in the event, it's written that it's in my dark room, but during the lockdown period, I was um, working in my bathroom, so um, I will uh, so we'll see uh, how I was working in this environment. And uh, so this exhibition will run until next January. And so we will have some updates each month. And as I have more materials, I just keep on uploading more like this. But at the same time, I'm going to make a a series called um, I want to title palpebra. Uh, it means uh, eyelid in Latin and it's all about these kinds of packaging of photographic materials and um, because I was thinking that you consider the um, photographic plates or papers as a part of your eye like a retina I thought that the packaging can be considered um, uh, like, um, like an eyelid. So, um, so you have different sorts of uh, um, design coming from different era and different uh, parts of the world. And um, those look very old, but when you open up, when you open them up, it, um, it, uh, it's often surprisingly fresh inside. And after this, the next update will be about unused films. And this one is a dead stock from the US Army that I purchased in uh, Rochester, New York, when I had a residency at the Chosisme Museum. And I was so excited when I found this because um, when you think that this could have, um, it could have filmed uh, the war. And uh, then I did some test with a piece of film that I found in France. So I just want to show it to you. So I wanted to mention about the sound. Um, maybe you uh, you heard on this film, but uh, you will find also in the uh, online exhibition too, which I recorded while I was opening up the package of the dead stock films. And uh, it's very subtle, but uh, I wanted to record because I thought that um, with this uh, comparison, uh, with the eye, I thought it's like listening to your own eye blinking. And, um, and another update that I'm thinking to do is, um, is some lantern slide plates from this uh, imaginary landscape series. And uh, it's reflecting the real landscape on the um, landscapes that I made. Um, so, and also during the program, I will have a dialogue with uh, Simon Baker, 
from Musée Européen de la Photographie. It's uh, on January 7th, and I'm very looking forward. So I'm, I hope you will enjoy the exhibition. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hanako. Um, I, among the things I appreciate about your work is how in-depth your research can be, especially with the vintage photographic materials and the film reels. Um, you mentioned the, the, the zoom that you can do, how enlarged your work is on the website. So I hope as well that everybody will, if they haven't already, get a chance to experience that because that's where you can really see the differences in the materials, I think, um, quite well. So. Um, I think we're all looking forward to that, as well as uh, your your programs, which will be conversations, as you mentioned, um, with, with Simon Baker about vintage processes um, and photographic materials. Um, so I hope you can join for that as well. Um, our final speaker is Aki Sasamoto, an artist based in New York, working in performance, also in sculpture, installation, and video. Sasamoto's practice often involves a sense of improvisation, following her stream of consciousness and responding to the existing conditions of the sites of her performances or the venues. She will present three new interrelated yet distinct performances this fall, starting with the first on October 22nd. Um, these performances will be done in collaboration with Yale School of Art Sculpture Department, uh, where Sasamoto also teaches. Welcome, Aki Sasamoto. I'm working with um, interested students from my department. Um, I'm not sure exactly how many of them will join me, but um, in spirit of the in improvisation, I would like to be open to a presenting this project as a process rather than a product or performance. So it would be more like students can join for any performance at any time and then toss an idea and then test it together. So it will be uh, no like a dress rehearsal for each performance. And that's what I am interested in presenting. Um, now, uh, the issue is the students are not able to leave the campus because of pandemic. So they cannot come to the South Gallery that we are going to have a live performance. And uh, as many people who are who know Japanese language and literature, they can probably know Ikkyu-san, but it's a, a kind of um, um, witty um, kid monk who always solve a problem with like an unexpected um, kind of poignant joke. And uh, that's like a one way to perhaps solve this live performance without being there. Um, or another way I can think of is to um, sincerely try to simulate the live and what that means and welcome a potential failure in doing so. So either way, it's going to have a lot of um, glitch. And then hence, I kind of want to share online before and after the performance, like what kind of um, thoughts that comes up among us collaborators. And this will be, um, I, I received this project. The, this will be a complete collaboration. And for each performance, I will list the name of the collaborators. Anyway, for, um, this I thought today I could present uh, three different and distant references um, to point to uh, ways of working that I did in the past that might apply for this project. And then also perhaps a subject that I'm thinking about. And this um, was a collaboration with the students. Uh, I did uh, three or four years ago at Rutgers where I was teaching at the time. And uh, there was a, a performance including myself, Colleen Billing, Russian, Chapman, Cedric Christian Diaz, Julian 
Gilbert Davis, Ali Oston, David Torres, Catalina Chuka, Jack Warner, Stefan Williams. And what we were trying to do at the time was um, title of this performance says spreading rumors inside the chapel. So we were trying to figure out a um, way to approach it live that cannot be captured like rumor. Um, and most of this performance, it was a 30, 40 minutes long performance. It was really hard to see in video <laughs> um, because it was mostly dark. But towards the end, the light did up and then we were sending wind as they left. Um, uh, so that was what you saw. Another um, example is um, a dance piece that I made a long, long time ago in the year 2000s. Um, it's, uh, it was also a collaboration with other dancers and musicians. And this was all the furniture that was collected in New York streets. And then people walk in and they just hear all those amplified sound um, between the furniture and then the architecture. And at some point, um, the dancer broke out of the pile and then we moved like furniture and furniture moved like human. And that was the, for me, that was a possibility to think about, um, and think about like um, object um, as already inherent, inherently have, um, possibility of live act. Um, this is my own work. Uh, also, older work, I, I wanted to kind of like a distant reference today. Um, and I was thinking also about sculpture and then how um, object can be a score for performance in a way. So during the performance, um, I used bags and this is a sculpture that has a potato that I could play as an instrument or get inside and then push away from the wall using sticks. And all these things were um, there as an installation. So when I was not performing, it was there, but I used it to uh, um, kind of do the action that was already written in the object. For example, this was a greater music stand. So when I performed, I grate it. And I'm thinking now that it potentially it could, usually when I perform in my own work, it has to be me, but I'm thinking about other possibility that if the object can already carry an action without, um, without me or without a student, could, could it be performed by surrogate or perhaps the gallery staff? Or if it's only me who's there, could, could that be, um, could I play sculpture that my collaborator makes. Um, besides sculpture, I could also go that, boil it down to an object, um, the ready-made. If I have this um, duct, what can I do? So this was a recent dance performance I've done, theater production, and uh, what uh, all the movements came from um, like a twisting or throwing that has a lot of sound. Um, what can I do with this object, right? Anyway, so I was thinking, going back to the um, site of the South Gallery at Japan Society, what can I do there, right? <laughs> the performance site is there. I wanna think about the site and inject deeply. Um, and how can I communicate through those thoughts? How can we, right, like with my students, um, through the live stream while we cannot be in there. And the, the real fact is neither artist nor audience can be there. Um, so I cannot lie about that. And uh, I'm just excited about this um, problem. <laughs> Thank you, Aki. I also wanted to mention her current exhibition, which is up at Bordolami Gallery in New York. Her work has also uh, been shown at the Kitchen Sculpture Center, the Ural Industrial Biennial of Contemporary Art in Russia, the Shanghai Biennial, and the Whitney Museum. Um, and I guess my comment on this is, is that I think what you're doing is fascinating in terms of posing a question, sort of, as you say, collectively testing the idea of performance make, making itself 
Um, and I'm sure we'll hear much more about that in the discussion that, that follows uh, momentarily. Um, so I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome all the artists along with Yuki Kamiya for a more in-depth conversation. Um, we'll also be taking questions from you all watching. So please feel free to add your great questions into the chat box. Um, I think this should be on the right, your right, depending on which device you're on. Thank you. Thank you very much for three artists, uh, Nobu and Hanako and uh, Aki. Uh, it's a really good to have you and hear your uh, concept of the project for this uh, from here to there, and also your uh, soul behind your practice. So since uh, March, it's actually uh, Japan Society has been closing the doors, including our exhibition space gallery. April uh, and May, uh, we don't know what's going on. So it has been a difficult moment for artists, art institution, and also the audiences. So it hasn't been experienced before, but rather than waiting what's coming back as before, we tried one step as an experiment. This situation, uh, difficulty, isolation, stay home, all the difficult part for we never experienced. As an art institution, always people gather, exchange idea, and uh, learn more. But all the same is not possible. So just we decided, okay, let's use this edition and ask the question to artists to work together online. So all three artists is never work, online work, always are uh, using a gallery space, exhibition space on site. And then how people can use this uh, virtual platform, which can connect Paris, yeah, West Coast, and also uh, in Japan and Asia. So thank you very much for being here together. And first of all, I love to uh, ask all the people who be in the, uh, behind the monitor to celebrate this moment for the artists to great achievement for the online project. So I am having a grass here. So maybe artists, let's toast fast. <laughs> Do you have it? And please join and uh, please kind of uh, celebrate artists. Kanpai. 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 <laughs> yeah. For all the kind of staff uh, who make things happen and to realize. Because we as the uh, art institution gallery always work uh, at the site. So it's virtual thing is like very new. But uh, for this round table, let's ask to the artist, uh, since the spring, so many uh, things changed. And for the artist, so as artist, how you uh, ex affect that this pandemic, isolation, stay home. And then please let us know your experience in a positive side or negative side. Can I ask from Nobu, who live in New York? Um, yeah, especially for the type of the work I do, um, I count on this um, everyday interaction with people. And then this kind of work became uh, very difficult um, because virus also counts on everyday interaction of people. So I no one, you know, like for example, the map piece, no one asks direction on the street anymore right now. And um, yeah, it feels weird. I, I, Cause I knew this kind of in-person interaction is becoming less and less because of technology um, bef before the pandemic even, but the pandemic accelerated this tendency and then, um, yeah, I felt that it's weird. And um, also the physical experience, I had to move out my studio. Um, I, was, uh, I was there for two years and then um, I was sharing with seven other artists and the writers and then sharing the space became uh, not as natural as before. So some people thought it's not uh, worth keeping because you cannot access as free. 
and then we collectively decided to leave the studio. And um, yeah, since then I've been working at home, uh, as you see. And uh, there's a positive side, you know, uh, because I've been cooking more, like more music and uh, more reading and uh, more time for kind of reflecting. So yeah, that's my experience so far. Mm. So Hanako, you are in Paris, France. So this pandemic happened a little earlier than United States. So it might be a little bit different stage now, but how's your life in France and how it's effect for other artist practice and artist life yourself? Hmm. Uh, yes, so uh, so here in Paris, the, uh, the very strict lockdown was um, like um, from middle of uh, March until um, uh, uh, March um, until May, so maybe uh, uh, two months and something. And um, but um, but in a but in a way, as an artist, uh, my practice is. Much more solitary than um, than nobles. <laughs> so, uh, so I, so I think uh, um, in a in a way I'm very uh, used to uh, to work alone. So um, um, at the beginning I was like, oh, it's okay, uh, I can deal with it. <laughs> but uh, um, but then uh, I couldn't uh, go to the uh, to my studio anymore because uh, the restriction of um, um, of transport was like uh, um, you can um, you can move one kilometer but not further. So um, so at one moment I I began to work at home and um, so transforming my um, my bathroom to a to a dark room and. Uh, um, well, it was um, it was kind of fun, but um, yeah, maybe two months was enough, <laughs> and uh, and now um, now I'm very happy to to go back to my um, to my atelier. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so you enjoyed some kind of uh, solidarity, but it's also it's the this uh, restriction not moving far. And it's becoming a problem. Yes, it's uh, nowadays, it's kind of easy to make appointment to have a meeting with you. Mm -hmm. But before everybody traveling for the next show by annual, difficult to catch you. Yeah. But in the good thing for us is now this online helps to communicate. It's not perfect, but mm -hmm. I can, we can grab you. But how about Aki, you have the different lore as artist and also as a professor at the university teaching student. Uh, so it's a very different law, makes it more difficult and challenging. So how do your life in the past months as artists? I think um, I just couldn't do art. <laughs> so uh, I was opposite of Hanako in a way, there was no productivity for me, but I think um, long term it's not. Um, you know, something will come up, but not right now. And um, generally, the weather forecast is very cloudy every day for me and skepticism and disillusion, but with a sense of um, excitement for destruction. I guess I'm talking politically, socially, um, the air in the United States and, um, you know, hoping for good, but there was some sense of morbid desire to witness, you know, hopefully good, but like this huge destruction. And um, I've been just having uh, existential question. It's just like, why am I excluding myself from it when I'm saying I want to witness? So there was some disappointment about that attitude. It's not something that I own. That's what I found myself in. And I want to think about that more and listen more than usual. I think that's what this pandemic did to me. Mm, I see. And there's also three of you 
usually never use online as a platform, but our request, the first things, please thinking about online as an alternative space to create something for your new project. It must be challenging and it's not the kind of your motivation, it's kind of forced to use this virtual platform. So you tried uh, already, you are, you are going to realize some performance from now on, but how was the challenge for you to use the virtual platform, not the physical space? Can you tell me your positive or in the end you can really eat it or <laughs> some of the reaction? Um, I think I feel like a challenge is just started. So it's, I, 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 as I walk online, I feel online has a strange, never ending, uh, ongoing nature. Um, because people can come in at any moment, and uh, also, uh, I you know the content can be updated over time. So this, um, yeah, like ongoing nature is has a potential, especially for my kind of work. Um, but it's also a challenge. I feel um, it's a very vast. Uh, space, I feel, and um, yeah, I, I uh, before I was asked this exhibition, I was uh, not so into seeing art online, um, but uh, I took this as kind of um, opportunity to experiment. So, experiment will happen during the exhibition, I think. Mm -hmm. but Hanako, uh Yes, I think um, um, yeah we um, we exchange a, a, a lot about this subject uh, with you and uh, Tiffany uh, during uh, preparing uh, the exhibition. But uh, what I was also thinking is about like um, since I'm uh, um, I'm working a lot about this um, materiality of the image, and uh, so. Um, uh, for for me already it's like it's it's already very different to um, to have an image on a glass plate and an image on a on a paper. So uh, uh, so if those ones are um, presented on a computer screen, uh, for me it's a very different materiality because um, it has um, it has light. It's it's back it has backlight. So, uh, um, so the texture is very much different. So, um, so I think um, to, um, to work with, um, um, uh, with digital image and uh, also online, it's, um, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not only um, to, um, to replace, to, to move um, uh, the work from um, the, the actual space to the, to the virtual space, but it's more like a um, change of materiality. And um, as I was talking in my presentation too, I think it's, uh, it's not only um, uh, bad points, but uh, there is also like, uh, if you have a, very good resolution image. Maybe you can have a, uh, a more extended experience, and um, and that um, and that that have um, that can be have some potential. So I think we can um, um, we can work on it maybe during this um, this exhibition. So yeah, I I'm keeping on thinking about. Hanako, you're so positive about the new materiality on the digital oh. world. Wow. And well, uh, I, I mentioned also the, uh, the negative points, which is like, uh, yeah, you cannot really distinguish um, all the uh, different materiality, but um, it's a, uh, you also, you always uh, gain something to lose something. It's, um, yeah, mixed. <laughs> and I can wanted to ask you, 
I, it's like a Vito Conchi always say a kind of face-to-face -face experience. It's mm -hmm. always the live on site. Mm -hmm. And uh, during the discussion, we also talking about, shall we do the pre-recording or mm -hmm. not? But are you really expecting and looking forward to being alive, including accident or failure? Why live performance, liveness is important for your production? Uh, for me, um, uh, yeah, Aki, yeah. Um, I think, I think live for me is an excuse to meet physically, right? Before, and then I think still, with in regard to this digital thing, I gained a sense of humility in trying to um, learn about digital tools, while I know that that's not never gonna be my main strengths so there was like a sense of humility of of not being able to be fluid in it and you know i gain a lot of empathy for people who um doesn't have access like for however reason for anything right so this was an interesting time and so for me again this is um excuse for us to see a side um of like what's lacking and then what we long in the end because i am my priority is physical and live or maybe not live necessarily actually physical live it doesn't really matter but so that's why i'm questioning live to really um understand why why physical mm -hmm. yeah so we really believe this kind of uh, yeah, uh, excuse to be live. And uh, Nobu as well, we also discussed, you are having a leading performance on October 8th in two weeks later. And uh, because of this kind of motion and uh, uh, social distance, we have been discussed to do it pre-recording, but end up live. Do you have any, uh, comment on that, uh, you stick on the liveness? Yeah, um, in the beginning, I thought about the option of doing the code. And then, yeah, and, um, and then I also thought about why pre-record. And then I think part of the reason was um, aim for the perfection and then uh, fear for the mistake and then I was a little embarrassed when I noticed that, you know, because um, also I remember my teacher said, uh, perfection is a cre uh, enemy for the creativity. And um, also my past work, I think told me like um, mistake could be kind of unique or intimate or human. So, that's why I chose, ended up choosing, I think, the live. Because um, these days, you know, I feel like mistake or getting lost, for example, um, is becoming kind of difficult. So it could be positive things, you know, making mistake. And um, yeah. I'm also thinking like um, cyber world is positive and negative, um, a place that people put the guard down. Mm -hmm. So um, that's um, very much like um, uh, uh, it has that, you know, in live situation, it has that. It's a, a communal like guard down moment. So mm -hmm. cyberspace could still, I, I won't access that energy of the cyberspace. Mm, so, yeah, today it's a, just a launch of your project. Uh, every two weeks, we are really looking forward to uh, create a uh, live experience and if maybe the failure or some uh, imperfection, but including it, this is what it is and that this is the challenge and the attempt. So it'd be kind of fantastic uh, to see. So hope everybody stay tuned uh, for ongoing development. So if anyone in this uh, event 
uh, can write it down the uh, question. I'm happy to uh, ask a question. Yeah, so if not, it, and also think about uh, it's uh, will positively think about some digital new technology. But it's always this moment happened like a seventies uh, when the video has emerged as the uh, material for the uh, artists, like John Jonas and, uh, started to use the portapack. And then performance become a kind of the uh, object to be repeated again. So this is unexpectedly we use this online Zoom and YouTube but we create some kind of a new communication and new experience. So do you expect something the technology can help or develop or stimulate your imagination? Ah, oh, uh, do you mean for my work? For your work, yes. Uh, yeah, um, yeah I've, been, I've been thinking about that since the uh, lockdown and maybe, maybe, I was rethinking really about um, um, the um, the beginning of the internet, and um, um, because yeah, previously uh, so Nobu mentioned that he was cooking a lot, and uh, I think everybody in the world was making bread or or, or making a homemade pasta or things like that, and. Um, and everybody was uh, um, looking for recipes online to do a more um, healthy food or doing yoga and stuff. And uh, this reminds remind me uh, a lot about um, 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 what I what I learned in my. In my art school, I was um, in the, um, the media art department in, the, in my master. So I learned about the, um, the beginning of the, um, of the internet, like uh, um, um, in, the, in the West Coast. So, um, uh, so, at the, um, so like at the beginning, um, it was like a, like a toolbox that everybody can, um, uh, can find a reference to um, to make uh, to make something uh, by themselves. So um, so I think um, so I think the, uh, the, the, um, uh, we live in a kind of a, a strange period that um, um, that we uh, we want to have that kind of tool mm -hmm. and uh, if it is going to uh, to transform us i don't know but um, um yeah i'm still thinking <laughs> so yeah that's again you are positive so we can have the new tool to express something yeah for the future so I had the privilege to keep asking you the questions. So hope uh, somebody can uh, have the question, but also it's a, we promised it's one hour. So it could be the ending of the time. So I'd love to say thank you to three artists to dedicate your time and give us a great challenge uh, online. And then it's not like a usual exhibition, it's ongoing. Until January, we are having communicate with you and I'm looking for the new project on bi-weekly Saturday. So I also uh, want to uh, express my uh, sincere uh, thank you uh, to the people who realized this project. From here to there, it's supported by, impartially by the New York Community Trust. Our gallery program is made possible by foundations and also individuals, uh, especially our friends of the gallery. Uh, for transportation assistance is always provided by Japan Airline. Thank you very much. Uh, to realize our project, always we have a great help to people. And from here to there is now on live on website. So you may access it through the link. Uh, so please check it. And it's by uh, it's monthly it develops so please uh, check and uh, stay tuned. 
And uh, also the project, it starts from the Thursday, October 8th by Nobu. Uh, October 22nd is Aki Sasamoto. And November 5th, just after the election, is Hanako Murakami. Yes, so uh, please check it out and how it's going to happen. And thank you very much for joining us. First ever virtual opening. And therefore, uh, I hope uh, we can see you uh, on the virtual platform again. And good night and see you virtually soon again. And thank you, artists. Thank you.